I'm not going to put you in this, on the spot to ask you for predictions. Okay. Um, but by May 29, mm. what do you personally want for your motherland? See, I would be frank with you. By May 29, 2019, mm. to say this is what you want for May 29, 2019, which, by the way, is about six months from now, there has to be a kind of design that would produce that result. That result. And I don't see any special design that would produce some extraordinary results in six months. Oh, wow. So in the reality of it, um, in being practical, there's nothing extraordinary that's going to happen to Nigeria on May 29, 2019, irrespective of who they vote for. That's the truth. Mm. Because the, the, the design of Nigeria today hasn't shown that anything extraordinary will happen. I desire a time when we will set up that design in place and these good things will happen. But at the moment, for us to get sound leadership, for us to get um, the, the real dividends of democracy at the moment is really practically built on chance. Us being lucky enough to, to vote for one good woman or man as president, which is, not as, which is not good enough compared to us having a system that is designed to actually work, which mm. at the moment we don't. Do you think some quote-unquote subordinates are, fit, are better fit to be the primary leaders of course, yes. In no, no question about it. Obviously, yes. In the vice president's debate, who won it for you? In the vice president's debate, who won it depends on what you're looking for. Um, some people are looking for uh, the alternative, so their biases are basically shifted in that line, mm. and they feel like the alternative, one of the alternatives won it. Some people are about, look, what have you done and what can you do? And then they go in that side. But I'm sorry, I'm not able to say this particular person won it. There was no clear cut winner for me. For you. Yeah, I was just, the biggest issue for me was that the two main political parties did far better than those that were supposedly so offering us a new that order. Narrative. It was, for me, it was disgraceful because that was an opportunity to show the old order that your time is about to end. Mm -hmm. And there was nobody of the new order that showed that sign. That was really clear. I don't think anybody would argue against that. Okay. Uh, we'll wrap things up right now. Um, <laughs> 2019 and many more years to come. We, holds, we, hold, we, hope, a better, we hope a better nation. In, I had to go back to the educational thing. Mm. You know, we mentioned, but we, knew, we just mentioned, we didn't really go into it. Just, we just touched base with it real quick. The educational system, which has been designed, because growing up, they would have told you, finish school, get a BSc, get a job. Oh, that's changed, man. Right? Everything has changed. Yeah. When, at what point would that change be affected? You know, in, in, the in, our, society? Be, in our society. I think, look, the way it has been in, in over the last two decades is that the world has been dragging us along on some fronts. Mm. Um, the world dragged us along with respect to um, GSM. Mm. Uh, the world dragged us along with respect to um, FinTech, even though we're doing relatively well on that front. The world dragged us along with respect to digital internet. So no matter how bad governments are around the world, there are just certain things that the world will drag you into by virtue of the fact that really and truly it's a global village. But the question for Nigeria and Nigerian leaders is, do you want to be dragged along mm. to that place? Or do you want to be amongst the countries leading that change where we're dragging others along? And I think the destiny of Nigeria, the destiny of this country as one of the most important um, Lead. Nigeria is practically the, the Nigeria should be the leader of black culture globally. Absolutely. Right? So we should be at the forefront of making change happen culturally, politically, economically, and indeed in every sense of the word. I say mm. everything Kali. <laughs> I feel everything Kali, no? Even though the oh, this is random. I, I you know, there's always this gist about there's certain people in power mm. that have investments in the generator companies. Mm. And for that reason, it seems as though mm. we might never have power. have power in this country. Like We might never actually experience 24-hour power mm. supply. Because there's... See, the game is about do you have, do you, have you even ever heard about that? It makes sense. Why does America always fight wars? Because war is big business. Mm. So if you want to stop wars, you've got to create an economy for those people to fall into, right? Life doesn't play with vacuum. So how are we able to ensure that the, the big players in the alternative power industry don't stop, don't continue to hold us to, 
you know, to ransom mm. and we don't have power. We have to create an, envi an environment and an economy where they can play in providing the primary power. And I think we try to do that with the liberalization of the industry, but I think we made a mess of it, but we still can do it. Um, unfortunately, too many times, the big interests and the big people in government, they are more often than not the same. So as a people, we've got to find a way to let them understand that there's actually more prosperity in a country that works. They can make more money in a, in a Nigeria that works than they are making today in a Nigeria that doesn't work. And that's the truth of the matter. Because the, when the pie becomes bigger, even if you're a thief, you have something bigger to, to steal. steal. And then if you're a good person, you also know that then more people can have access to the big pie. Now what they're doing is you have a very, very small pie. And they're still in a large part of the pie and they think they're stealing big. They're not stealing big because they're stealing practically everything. There are thieves in every country of the world. But the major difference is that one, their pies are so big they don't even notice them too. When you get caught, you're in trouble. So do you think the, the part of the things that needs to be affected is obviously the ju judiciary system? The judiciary system, then we've got to build new new opportunities in our economy. Look at the look at the GSM economy. It's an entirely new uh, sector. We did people didn't have phones before. Now we have phones. We have people that are dealing in selling of these phones. We have people that are dealing in selling of parts of the phone. We have people that are repairing the phones. We have people that are creating apps for the phones. Like the chain of opportunities in that single industry that did not exist 20 years ago is massive. Mm. So what we must now do is create More industries, industries like, like that that will create other chains. The, 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 the judiciary has to work. You cannot build a country without a judiciary because Basically, it's a, it's everybody just all man for himself. And all man for himself means that I could come kill you and I, I'd get away with Ooh, it. it I could come collect your wife or collect your husband and nothing would happen, collect your land. We cannot have a society like that. So property laws have to be effective. People have to know the path to wealth. Like, what do I have to do to register my company? I don't have to go meet anybody. I don't, we need to remove this, this thing where there has to be a human being trying to intercept, like people, you build an automatic car park and you put somebody there to be, to be dropping tickets. That's madness. <laughs> let me press the thing. Let the thing give me paper. Let me go. <laughs> go to Tanzania. Go to Uganda. Go to Ghana. Nobody's manning these things. That's the essence. That you would go there, no matter how illiterate you are, at least you've, you, you've been taught that just go. You, when you press this, a paper comes out. You drive in it, opens the door for you. It calculates how much time is spent mm -hmm. inside the airport or whatever. If it's about if it's one hour, there's an amount. When you go, you slot it in, it calculates that amount, whether you pay with your car. Like, like let's let's automate this country. Let's automate governance. Let's automate everything. Visa on arrival, let it be visa on arrival. Let me go online wherever whatever part of the country, whatever part of the world I am in. Let me go online, go to the visa on arrival site for Nigeria. Pa, 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 whatever payment I have to make. Let me collect a document. Let me arrive in Nigeria. Let me have my, my passport stamped or my visa given to me. I don't have to go meet anybody for whatever. We have intentionally set Nigeria up not to work. And some of these things do not require you budgeting anything mm. it's just put a camera somewhere let some sorry to say but they are really idiots let them do whatever they do and then get them arrested and then fire them it looks like what i'm saying sounds easy but yes it really does sound it really is easy, easy. because you practically see people messing our brand up all over the place in places where we could put robots and robots will do everything i don't want this thing to you know degenerate this interview to degenerate into you know that that sort of place but you know, it gets annoying <laughs> when you know that <laughs> things, could have things can actually work so easily i don't have to go to your i don't want to come to your office Abby? i don't want to sit down for anybody it annoys me like hey, hey, do a wait and look we are we and we've we've intentionally set nigeria up this way it wasn't like um it was it i, I could say it by default but at least now we know things can be better so we've intentionally set it up this way it, it pisses me off when i arrive the country and i have to have two sets of people touch my passport. Nigeria is the only country in the world, and I've been to at least 40 of them. It's the only country in the world where my passport gets to, stamp, to be stamped twice on arrival. Only one. Also, it's the only country in the world where my passport gets to be signed um, stamped twice on departure. For me, every point is an opportunity for corruption, and we've got to remove them. We've got to remove, we've got to find a way to remove those points. And if it's because we have to provide jobs for people, then we've got to create new industries and new opportunities for jobs. You can't put a human being beside a robot. Then what's the essence of the robot? Why should I have my, my bag go through a scanner 
when some other person is right beside his corner so to, open to the bag. what sort of nonsense it does not make sense it doesn't, i know and it looks like we are just you know we intentionally set ourselves up to frustrate ourselves mm -hmm. and it's wrong it doesn't make sense but the other problem i have with it is that and it comes with the analogy of the frog now when you put a frog in a, in regular water regular water the frog is inside when you start to hit that frog little by little the frog gets the, the frog practically dies thinking because it continues to adjust to the heat it continues to adjust to to the temperature of the water before it realizes it gets killed but pick another type of frog the same size everything put it in say 40 degrees centigrade um, hot water put it inside the frog tries to escape from it so for instance when you see nigerians that have been out of nigeria for 15 20 years or nigerians that were not born in nigeria comes to nigeria and they start to complain don't think that they are forming or they are doing shakara don't think that they are not normal it is you that is not no, normal no, no. You've got because to to... you are the, that frog that eventually got used to the abnormality and the madness of nigeria that things that the person demanding for his or her rights is like hey, they're all right it's not that small thing it's not a small thing you become that frog that is being killed every day and being killed has become normalized for you mm. this other person that is complaining that you think he's doing shakara is not doing shakara this person actually knows that they could get killed if they don't really really run away and escape from this reality and i think that's the reality of nigeria where all of us have look i complain about everything because i refuse to take these things to be normal and but too many times people think i'm a controversial person but i'm sorry i'm that frog that has refused to be born to death and I think all of us have to be that frog that refuses to be born to death. And if we, all of us, if, if you come together to do that, we will be fine. But if we remain in this state where everybody's trying to, so we have a bad road to our estate, rather than all of us come together to fix that road, everybody's looking to buy an SUV. Mm. We have crime rates going high and high. Everybody the poor people are raising their fences. The rich, a bit rich people are buying houses in Ghana. The rich ones are going to the US and going to Dubai, right? We have issues with the transportation network or the, the aviation net, aviation system. Everybody's buying private jets. At the, at the time I heard, we had more private jets than, than commercial jets. Rather than make this thing work for all of us. And at the end of the day, the commonsensical thing, the economic thing actually is that we need to have collective solutions. They are cheaper than when each person... Imagine all of us, we are building fences, we are raising our fences, we are buying security gadgets and everything. We are all buying SUVs. It's cheaper for us to fix that road. It's cheaper for us to fix security. It's cheaper for us to fix the, the educational system. So we don't spend a billion dollars in Ghana. Mm. You know, it's cheaper for us, really and truly, to make Nigeria work than all of us scrambling like rats trying to escape Nigeria in one way, or all of us scrambling like thieves trying to get the part of it that we can get. Because it's not sustainable. A Nigeria that works will make you richer. Mm -hmm. And it will make a poor person rich. And to make an extremely poor person at least be able to so, um, so have a living standard. And I think that's a world that is possible. It's happened elsewhere, many places around the world that used to be poor, especially in Southeast Asia, especially in Southern America, even some parts of Africa. They're doing much better. But Nigeria, we have accepted this abnormality and we have normalized it and we're living with it and the water is hotting up and we're just going along and we're dying. Crazy stuff. Um, Omojo, thank you so much sir, for pleasure. stopping by. It's been a pleasure. pleasure. Quite insightful, a bit heated, but it's necessary. <laughs> Very, very necessary. Off the top, I am VJ Adams. I'll catch us next time uh, when we have another influential person join us and chat with us. Bye.